Vince Taylor and Buffalo on the Brain proudly bring to you the Mafia Hot Seat, a built-in Buffalo production. When it's too tough for them, it's just right for us. Be ready. It might be chilly. Ladies and gentlemen of Bill's Mafia, first up in the hot seat this week, back for the second time, we have EJ Daniels. EJ, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. Vince, I appreciate you uh, having me again on the hot seat. I, I salivate every time I get a chance to get on the hot seat. Man. Oh, you're too kind. You give me way too much credit. <laughs> but I want to make sure I give you a chance to plug your work as well. So why don't you tell us where we can find your work? So first and foremost, you can find my work at coldfrontreport.com. I have various articles. We just throw it, threw up a, a YouTube video of us talking about, you know, Jerry Hughes and his contract situation and how he'll shake out his roster, positioning, all of that. So YouTube, Cold Front Report on Facebook, Twitter, all of that. And then uh, PFF Bills, that's the uh, Twitter account I run for PFF. Ten questions. Which one would you like? You were the first one to go this week. All right. Um, I am going to go with number five. Okay. Which rookie is going to have the biggest impact for the Bills this year? Because I don't know that any of them are, but which one's going to have the biggest impact? Um, well, I'll start with the rookie that's has some bloods the first day, first two days of camp, and that's Boogie Basham. You heard today that he had he picked off Josh Allen, a batted pass for interception for a touchdown. He was the most pro ready defensive end that they took. Out of him and Rousseau, um, he was pretty solid in college. Uh, he has a nice NFL body, got some uh, positional versatility. I think he will come out, make an impact at more than one spot. See, that's the key. He can play inside. He can play outside. He might not play any one tech, but I could see him on some snaps spelling Ed Oliver at three tech. Definitely could see him playing some five tech or some, or some wide nine tech and getting around some left tackles. He did all of that in college. So as far as impact for rookie, I think it will be Boogie Basham because he's been the, he is the most pro ready out of all the draft picks that the Bills have taken. I th I think that's probably my pick too, but I just wonder how many snaps he's actually going to end up getting. Mm -hmm. And that defensive line, that hold it, that's that and wide receivers is going to be some tough decisions come camp time. And you got mm -hmm. Obata there. Of course, you know Epinenza's job to save. He might even be the likely starter because I don't think Addison's going to be around. But uh, there, he's probably got the best path to making a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's all. That's exactly what it's about. Your path to the field, and he has a path to the field. If you look at last year, the Bills last year rotated a lot of bodies on the defensive line, so I don't see them, you know, differentiating for what they've done already. They just added more help on that offensive line. And I was telling somebody this the other day. Addison really didn't play as bad as people are saying that he played. He had a lot of flash plays. And I think it was what it was is that he tapered off towards the end of the year. But if I, I, as looking at a season in totality, he actually played pretty solid for what the Bills were paying him. But, you know, I think that Boogie Basham will be able to get some snaps away from Addison, get some snaps away from Jerry Hughes. Jerry Hughes is a great player, in my opinion. Um, I think he'll he'll play both sides, and that's where I think you know his path will come because of his versatility. He can play left right, left defensive end, right defensive end, three tech. He'll be able to contribute from all you know portions of the field. And the Bills may they may have something reminiscent of what the uh, Giants had. Remember when the Giants went to the Super Bowl? They had you know Tuck, JPP, Michael yeah. Strait, and that crazy type line. The Bills may have something like that going. You know, brewing with all these first round picks, second round picks, and Epinesa and Addison and Jerry Hughes, they may have something like that go on. Well, I mean, from your lips to God's ears, EJ, let's make it happen. <laughs> uh, I, that's like, like that's like it. that's like best case scenario, though it, it is. But that's yeah. me being optimistic. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. I mean, Groot's not nothing, but I, he mm -hmm. feels like he's more of a project player. I know a lot of his stacks came from the inside when he was running studs. Yeah. And that's not, to me, that's not the same thing as beating a tackle and getting a sack, which is really what you have to do from an end in the NFL. So Absolutely. 
I'm hearing from guys like Sal and Matt Perino and Ryan Talbot that he actually does look the part. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to hear that. Uh, and then, of course, we've heard all about Boogie. Um, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Rashad Wild Goose ends up taking the job from Tehran. It's they, yeah, that, it, it I, could I, happen. I, I'm not holding my breath, but I don't think it's yeah. I, I don't think it's completely closed off. Yeah, uh, I had put out an article actually on ColdFrontReport.com and wrote about you know Tehran's season in its totality. I basically was saying that, you know, Bill's Mafia seems to remember only two plays, but you have to remember the totality of his season where he was pretty much garbage, you know, for more than half the season. And then he kind of put it together, you know, those last couple games. And I said, since the Bills run the most nickel, last year they ran the most nickel in the league. 90% of the time they were in nickel defense. They would stand to upgrade the nickel position, like you're saying. So it's not out of the realm. I mean, that, you know, Rashad Wild Goose, you know, could take that slot corner role. You got Dane Jackson that's fighting with Levi Wallace for cornerback two. We already know about cornerback one. And so where is Goose going to play in reality? You know what I mean? So it's only slot corner snaps that are left to be had. So if, you know, Rashad Wild Goose shows something in camp, I can see him also being in a rotation with Teron Johnson, so they can get some type of ath- more athleticism at that spot. Teron Johnson, he's, he's a solid player. He actually has, you know, a top, I think, 10 coverage grade in the slot since he's been in the league. But, I mean, when they go up against those better teams, when you go up against guys like Tyreek Hill, you have to cover guys like him in the slot. I mean, you're going to need an upgrade at some point in time because teams are just going to start picking on him. Yeah, no, I agree. And I – I clearly remember the times that I'm sitting in this very room watching the Bills cursing his name <laughs> individually because he's given up a long catch over the middle. Or you know, it yeah. happened. It happened a lot last year. And and you're right. I do feel like there's a lot of people who remember those two big plays, um, and you know, kind of the reputation he, he built for himself. Maybe as a rookie, we maybe pumped him up a little bit too much. Um, mm-hmm. But back then, I thought he was going to be this. I wanted to compare him to uh, Bob Sanders, if you remember him in the Colts. Now, I know he was a yeah. safety, but Bob mm-hmm. just didn't care about his body. Yeah. Bob, Bob would lay it out every game, which was why he was always hurt. But he was a great tackler, and he you know, had the coverage skills. And I thought we were getting that out of the slot with him, but that doesn't it didn't really work out. So Wild Goose might have a shot to take that. Yep, no question. Wild Goose was a solid player in uh, at Wisconsin. He actually played outside corner. At Wisconsin and um, PFF's Mike Renner is like was a really big proponent of uh, Rashad Wild Goose coming out of the draft and think that he could be a steal. And when the Bills got him, I was like, man, you know, this guy could be something. Like I said, he played outside corner uh, at Wisconsin, but he played in his own heavy scheme at Wisconsin nonetheless. So there is some transferable traits that he can have. And like I said before, you know, Teron Johnson definitely has a, t- a high coverage grade since he's been in the league. I think, like I said, I think it's number 10. But, I mean, I don't think that's going to get it done. You know, you got to have a solid, solid guy in the slot these days with uh, as many three wide receiver sets as being uh, deployed, many spread sets. When they got big slots and you got guys like Travis Kelsey being able to dominate from the slot, line, you, you got to have some type of upgrade. So hopefully Rashad Wild Goose can do that. He's played zone a lot, so he's pretty good in zone. So, you know, hopefully he can, he can show what he can do in preseason and earn himself some slot snaps. But, All right. EJ Daniels. Over from the cold front report and PFF bills, giving us a few minutes of his time. EJ, it's fun, man. I always enjoy talking to you. Yes, we 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 think quite the same, Vince, and I love it. Always a pleasure, though. This has been fun. Let's do it again in the you know maybe sometime next month or so. Just let me know, Vince, and you know I'm here. All right, man. EJ Daniels, have a good night. You too. Thank you.